please. Okay, thank you very much, Thibault, for the introducing. Uh, uh, and thank you for the invitation for your webinar. Uh, and thank you, of course, to everybody to join our meeting. Uh, today, I would like to present the um, results of research, uh, which I made, maybe not accidentally, but uh, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, because I never expected to go to uh, such results uh, after digging uh, the archives uh, in Poland. Uh, because the, the, the first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, research into Ponticolbia is one of, uh, of course, of the most important archaeological uh, uh, sites in the Black Sea Basin and, and has a rich and long history. And nevertheless, uh, while conducting courtesy of my Ukrainian colleagues uh, excavations at the site, uh, I realized relatively quickly that the history of the research on the site was described in a serious way only since the uh, uh eight, end of the 18th century so the when the uh, russian empire appears in this in this territory and uh, uh, won this territory from Turks, and the identification of the ruins uh, uh, of olbia at the mouth of the bohol to the dniep uh, as um, by by peter simon uh, von pallas so it is the start of the uh, uh, narration of the his about the uh, research history uh, of the Olbia on Olbia of the early mentions of Olbia the travel journal of Maciej Broniewski was most often mentioned meanwhile uh, after even a um, quite uh, uh, a, a cursory query I found several extremely interesting references to Olbia or Boris Tennis in all Polish literature starting from the 16th century. And it was a great discovery for me to find in the central archives of historical records Warsaw, in Warsaw in Poland, a collection of documents uh, uh, from the Royal Chancellery and especially one document dated for the 1542 and describing the topography of the vicinity of Olbia and Ochakiv. Uh, in this way, as small as I initially thought research trip turned, turned into the fascinating journey into the land of the old Polish literature, both Latin and written in Polish. Uh, however, at, the, uh, at some point, uh, it was necessary to complete this research, uh, which was only a supplement to the study of the excavations material. So this presentation is concentrated on a fragment of this research dealing with the document found in the archive in which the territories around Olbia uh, are mentioned. The knowledge of this document disappeared among Polish antiquity researchers, but not about among the historians of this uh, period. I mean, 16th, 17th century uh, Polish history but among uh, uh, Polish antiquity researchers around the mid uh, of 19th century, and it was never realized among other antiquity scholars. Uh, in this presentation, I, will, I would like to bring it uh, back to the minds of researchers of the topic. Um, okay, the, um, uh, Actually, the history of modern research on Olbia, though not in sense of modern science, does not begin at the end of the 18th century, but at the beginning of the uh, 16th century. Uh, okay, so uh, as I mentioned, then you see the uh, map of the uh, Polish Lithuanian state, uh, actually, Jagiellonian state uh, uh, in the 16th century. Uh, uh, 15th and 16th centuries, as you see, it reached also the uh, territory uh, which was uh, um, uh, occupied, which is occupied now by, by the by the Olbia, by the ancient Olbia. 
Um, so uh, mm, uh, the, both Ponticobia and the Baristanes as a river uh, too appears uh, relatively often and in an interesting context in the works of the old Polish writers. And it is difficult to separate Latin text from the Polish because basically all old Polish authors knew Latin and wrote, I, uh, wrote either in both languages or only in Latin. This changes only at the end of the 17th century or maybe rather in the uh, 18th century when the Latin slowly loses its role as a universal language. Uh, in the consequence, it was good or very good as a side effect of the state of Afos knowledge of ancient culture with a particular emphasis of, on Roman literature and mythology with which people were acquainted during the study of Latin. Hence, both in Polish and Latin language literature of the uh, 16th and 17th centuries, there are many references to figures from the history and mythology of ancient uh, um, uh, Rome uh, and in the formal sphere uh, to imitate literary topoia in both historiography and poetry. Uh, for the latter one uh, of the most important models was Horace, but knowledge of other poets in the golden and silver periods of Roman literature is also visible. Uh, so uh, why I'm talking about this? Because uh, it should be not, uh, uh, it should be not uh, surprising that in this context, that the only area where the territories occupied by the Polish Lithuanian state or Jagiellonian state, and later by the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, uh, and earlier uh, in the ancient times by the ancient Roman and Greeks, played a special role in such a discourse in the old Polish literature. Uh, it concerns the area between the lower Dniester and the uh, Dnieper which generally covers the area between ancient Olbia and Teras. And much of this territory was known in the 17th century under the name of Wild Fields. Uh, for a proper understanding of the context in which these areas appear in uh, literature and in our document, uh, I think that it will be necessary uh, briefly explain their image, uh, I mean, Olbia and Boristenes, um, um, in ancient literate, literature uh, from Herodotus to the Roman period, because the image created, uh, created uh, at that time was a reference point for uh, modern authors. So uh, historic Olbia, as you both see, uh, as you have everybody, uh, everyone see uh, and know, uh, uh, situated at the western bank of the southern book, Boch, or Hippanis in ancient time. Uh, in the mob, in the uh, place where it flows into the Dnieper and forming the beginning of the Liman. And uh, the area of Olbia is approximately covered by uh, the entire territory of the Liman, uh, which flows uh, from the uh, Black Sea by speed and flows into the Black Sea only about 30 kilometers farther near Yorchaki. On, this, uh, on the islet located opposite Ochakiv, today called Bierezan and in the antiquity Boristenis, uh, we find the earliest traces of the presence of Greeks of, uh, in the area. And the exact area of the Olbias Hora is discussed by specialists. And I would like not touch the topic, but uh, this is uh, perhaps an additional element uh, that confused the issue of Olbia nomenclature where uh, the changing borders of the territory controlled by the, uh, by the city, by the Olbia itself. And the most important for our considerations, however, is the fact that from the point of view of the Greeks and Roman, Romans, Pontic Olbia was located in the north, while the north uh, in the ancient sense initially stretched from the trace uh, to the mythical North Ocean. Uh, it should also be noted that this its image has evolved, I mean the uh, North image in ancient culture over the time. 
regardless um, of these changes in perception, Olga and Scythia were always part of the North in antiquity. And on the mental map uh, of people educated in ancient literature, these territories were identified with the North for a long, long time and not with the East uh, uh, as if resulted from the geographical location in relation to Paris, London, Berlin, and even Warsaw. It, it changes only in the 18th century. So uh, what we know about, the, let's, uh, let's remind shortly what we know about the uh, Olbia uh, and Boris called also Boris in the uh, uh, in the ancient uh, sources. Uh, so in ancient literature and throughout it, uh, as well as in the modern one, the image of Olbia from the times of Herodotus and the period of its greatest splendor has been dominated, uh, in my opinion. It should be noted that certain confusion in the naming of the city, which already appears in the Herodotus and continues throughout the ancient um, and modern period, and in fact continues to the present day. The confusion between the Ochakiv as a place of the ancient Olbia and the Olbia, uh, historic Olbia, the place of the excavations uh, by now. Uh, so you have also the description by Herodotus here, the snow. So this is uh, uh, the territory, uh, the city is the territory in which the snow and coldness is uh, usual, it's normal thing. Uh, here you have to, uh, uh, of course, uh, I would like to only remain that the Boch was Hippanis and Niest Boristanis in the ancient time. Uh, so uh, at that time, uh, there was a parallel name of the polis, sometimes referred as Olbias, another time as Boristanis. Uh, this is not proper place for deeper discussion uh, about this, but it played uh, an important role in later times and perhaps, and perhaps uh, was the cause of the misidentification of ancient Olbia with Ochaki back in the early 19th century. Uh, there may be two reasons, in my opinion, for this. First, in front of today Ochaki, uh, or today's Ochaki, there is a, an island known today as Birzan, as I said, uh, on which they, they are the old, oldest trading posts uh, of the Greeks. Uh, and uh, uh, only later, the Olbia was founded uh, uh, in, the, in the historical place uh, of the excavations place. And the um, uh, island, a peninsula in ancient period actually, uh, lies at the mouth of the Liman in the antiquity, also called Boristanis, into the Black Sea. So the set settlement bore the same name or similar name in antiquity, and the name, the same name, was used even in antiquity for Olbia and Boristanis. And in later time, uh, there is a very interesting uh, idea or hypo hypothesis, firstly uh, formulated by uh, by uh, 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 Vinogradov, um, uh, by Yuri Germanovich Vinogradov, that actually Olbia was uh, in several physical geographical places or so one polis in several places, including also even the, uh, the Achilles Island. So it could be, it could also cause the, uh, this misunderstanding. Uh, now you have uh, another example of the Herodotus uh, describing uh, this area uh, and also the confusion maybe uh, when the Hellenes, Kitai, um, Olbiopolitas, uh, Boristeneitas. Uh, uh, so we have uh, mm, uh, we have the um, uh, uh, a confusion in ancient time even uh, with the with the name. And the uh, second uh, uh, second reason for the misunderstanding and the problem with the identification of Olbia could be Turkish potters uh, in Ochakiv. Uh, which was built largely of stones transported in Aliman from the ruins of Olbia. And we find in the OSPA in volume one, many examples of the stones with the inscriptions found not only in Ochaki, but uh, in other neighboring cities, the inscriptions from Olbia. 
uh, and uh, the, 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 in describing the inscriptions, there's, there is an address that found in Ochaki or found in uh, other places, uh, for example. So perhaps these stones and possibly some Greek inscriptions on some of them could lead to a misconception in the 16th, 17th century or later um, about the identity of ancient Olbia uh, with the modern Chaki. Nevertheless, in the light of the above mentioned uh, findings, uh, in the uh, hypothesis of Benedetto Bravo and uh, laterly and early uh, by Vinogradov, uh, we may, it may turn um, out that the identification of Olbia with the vicinity of Ochakiv is not unfound. So the, uh, the Berezan and the vicinity of Ochakiv is, uh, uh, was actually also Olbia, uh, the part of the police of Olbia. Uh, so uh, um, now you have uh, the other uh, point by Herodotus, uh, uh, which is very, which is maybe important for our later the uh, considerations uh, because of the Griffoi. Uh, as you see, the Griffs will be uh, we reappear in the old Polish literature. Uh, and other uh, places by Herodotus, uh, by Herodotus uh, uh, about the Scythians. Uh, in the Roman time, which is uh, uh, very interesting, uh, uh, the uh, place of Scythians was uh, um, uh, changed, uh, replaced by the Sarmatians as a host of this territory for some time which in the ease of the old Polish authors could make this uh, area even more attractive in connection with the widespread belief that in the Sarmatian origin um, of the Polish nobility. Anyway, Sitia and Sarmatia, together with the vicinity of Olbia and Veristenes, uh, the river, they have enduringly entered in the rhetorical gimmicks of ancient literature as examples of distance, light, and cold territories. So that this is the starting point for the modern uh, uh, writers. And then you see the uh, this Greek situation with Greek name, very interesting uh, uh, map of Heinrich Kiepert in 1867. Uh, and um, so you have the Boristenes, Hilaya, all described uh, by the, uh, all described, uh, all the territory described by this uh, uh, by Herodotus and other authors are uh, to find here in uh, on this map. Uh, okay, so this is the Olbia, the Google map, and the real situation of Olbia. Uh, just to remind the Ochaki, the Berezan uh, islands. Uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, there are maybe traces of the peninsula uh, so this is the Berezan, and the, uh, uh, in ancient time it was a peninsula, uh, not the not the island. And Ochaki uh, here, uh, this topography is uh, and the Olbia itself here, uh, Buk or Hipanis and Dnieper or Boristenes here and Liman uh, here, as you very very good know. So. Uh, It should be. Uh, let's let's go to for the better understanding of the uh, credibility of the our document. Uh, let's uh, try. Let's go to the historical a little historical background. So, uh, for almost two hundred years, the area the area around the Olbia was uh, in interest of interest to the elites of uh, the Polish Lithuanian state, also for military and diplomatic reasons. At all, although it seems a bit exotic in the light of the later history, almost until the end, uh, to the end of the 16th century, there were intense attempts by Poles and Lithuanians to recapture uh, the lands first seized by the Tatars and then by the Ottoman port uh, at the beginning of this century. These attempts become, uh, became uh, particularly intense in the mid of the 16th century, especially in the years 1531, 1573, 
when the Polish-Lithuanian side undertook a series of military expeditions to, Och to Ochakiv and more broadly uh, to the area between Liman, which means Olbia, and the Bilhorod Nistrovsky ancient terrace. Traces of these events can be found in the Turkish section of the Kron archives uh, in, in Warsaw. Uh, uh, and in the Turkish document from Basha, Ban Basha Bash Bakani, Archivi in Istanbul on the economics about the economics of Jankerman, which means Ochakiv, uh, Akerman, behold Nistrevsky, and Bender Tahini, as well as Kilia in this period. Uh, these issues were discussed in very competent article by Andrzej Dubinsky. Uh, which I follow in many places when describing the historical context. The most valuable document, as I said, uh, is description of the border line between Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Ottoman port, dated for the 1542. For a proper assessment uh, of the topographical credibility, uh, as I said, uh, I just uh, uh, shortly go to the uh, he, to the history of this area, but uh, before that, I would like just um, tell you that this is very unique situation in the ancient uh, history or archaeology in Poland, because this is the only one place in which uh, we have the situation that we can find the sources the informations about the site and topography of the site in Polish arch archives. There is no other ancient colony or uh, city uh, of the Roman city uh, in which uh, in, in similar situations. So it is very new and very unfamiliar situation for the Polish scholars uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to use this, this kind of, of, of sources. Uh, okay, uh, so then you, this is the this article of our, 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 uh, Artur Andrzej Jubinski uh, and uh, Narushevich. Even Narushevich, this is the last one, uh, last one of last sources in Polish literature. Uh, the original is in Polish, uh, which described the. Uh, 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 the history of the Ochakiv and Aria, including Olbia, uh, in the in the in the 15th and 16th century, because in the times of Jagiełło and Vitautas, uh, Poland gained access to the Black Sea from the mouth of the Dnieper, Bilhorod Nistrevski Ackerman, and the mouth of the Danube, Kilia, after oath of fealty by the Principality of Moldavia. Uh, to the Polish crown in 3087 and Lithuania directly after subduing by, by Vitautas the territory uh, from the mouth of the Niest, behold Nistrevsky, to the mouth of Dnieper, uh, Olbia means. As you can see, the area around Olbia was under control of the Polish Lithuanian states despite the defeat of Vitautas at the Battle of Boskla in 13. Uh, 99 and the fall of the idea of subjugating of the neighboring Tatars uh, for about next 100 years. Uh, and uh, at, that, at that time, all the time, several of fiefs uh, within these borders were granted to the Polish nobility, as you see in this, in this document, in this translation. As a part of one of such grants, Ochakiv and its surroundings were property of the Jaswowiecki and Sieniawski family. And actually the Ochakiv at the first one, uh, at the first time it was uh, uh, built uh, and fortified by the Vitautas. So this is the Taurika of Adam Narushevich, the second edition, 1805. Uh, and then uh, slowly, slowly, uh, the knowledge about these uh, events disappears in the Polish history, uh, mm, uh, uh, in the Polish uh, research history of the antiquity. Uh, there you have the original in the pages uh, of this uh, one. And the situation, uh, mm, uh, the topographical situation um, uh, here. In the 15th century, especially after the capture of the uh, Constantinople by the Turks, 
uh, the situation began to change. Uh, on the one hand, the Turks sought to gain co control over the lower Danube. Uh, on the other hand, these areas were gradually occupied by the Crimean Tatars. In 1484, the Turks seized Kilia and Bilhorod Dnistrovsky, uh, and in the 1492, Ochakiv, which uh, was Jankelman, which means Newcastle in Tatarian, or Ozu Kalesi, Dniep Fortress in Turkish. Uh, so it came under the control of the Crimean Hanat. This caused a military reaction, first by Kazimir for the Jagiellon, and then by Jan I the Olbracht, who in, um, in the 1492 took the throne in Poland. So initially, several significant victories were won in the battles with the Tatars and Turks, but uh, spectacular defeat in 1497 during the retreat after the unsuccessful siege of Suchawa, uh, only bury, not only bury hopes for regaining Moldavia, but also postponed the attempts to regain Ochakiv and the neighboring uh, uh, territories. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the, the uh, sources, there, there are the sources, the literary sources, but we have confirmed this situation, the uh, solid present presence of the Lithuanian, uh, Lithuanians and Poles in this territory by the excavations. This is uh, only very fresh published, the Fortezia Tiagan, uh, Lithuanian fortress and the uh, vicinity of Kherson, uh, as you see, which was built in the 17th, uh, 14th century and uh, disappears uh, at the beginning of the 16th century when the Tatars and uh, Turks are coming uh, to there. So there you have the um, reconstruction, uh, even the uh, 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 cannons uh, uh, there were found. So it was very solid and most probably Ochakiv in this play, in this moment was very similar. So this is the this is the place of this of this fortress. Uh, and the photography and uh, also the plans of this fortress. So we have confirmed this uh, solid presentation both in the literary and archaeological sources. Uh, the third one, uh, there are maps uh, from this uh, from the 16th and 17th century. Uh, and I just uh, this is this is uh, um, uh, actually the material for uh, 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 separate uh, uh, article or paper uh, about the maps because they are very specific source of information. But only in one map of this uh, uh, from this uh, uh, period, it, it means 16th, 17th century. I found the information uh, about Olbia. So this is the Mercator map issue 1623. And then you, uh, the, in the Atlas, you can find uh, so this vicinity, this the, the area, which are of our interest. And then you find Olbia. Uh, Olbia of this, uh, not in Ochakiv, uh, but uh, just, uh, in, in very very close to this uh, to this uh, fortress, I I just present you the uh, results of the of the excavations, but of course this is the wrong place, and uh, I would like not now uh, examine the the sources and the history of this plan. Anyway, uh, this is the uh, the Tiahanka, and uh, as you see, very close. Uh, is by in, at, at this Mercator plan map uh, place the Olbia. Uh, there are other the Sigmund, Sigismundus von Herbestein the uh, plan uh, which without Olbia and uh, very interesting uh, uh, map uh, of the Boplan uh, who made this this map uh, for the Polish king Władysław the fourth in the seventeenth at the beginning of the seventeenth century. Uh, but uh, uh, as I said, this is only a, a shortly mentioned. So let us take uh, the history from this opposite side to Turkish, uh, to Turkish side. As you see, 
uh, this is the situation in the end at the end of the 15th century. Then they gained this territory, and uh, uh, it was still uh, in this in this territory uh, still uh, in the possession until the coming of Russians. Also, this territory was not so important for the Turks. The main the main uh, axis of the of the expansion to Europe was Belgrade and Hungary. So it is the only the side and not what the, the the important was only the corridor to just to join with the Khanat with the with the Tatars and the, at the Crimea. Uh, this is the situation, and then uh, we come back to the sixteenth um, century. Uh, so the um, as I mentioned earlier, in the 16th century, and this territory is a period of a mutual guerrilla warfare, which began, uh, which uh, began at the Turkish Tatar side. Uh, it was primarily uh, aimed this 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 uh, rights aimed uh, at occupying slaves, uh, acquiring acquiring uh, sorry acquiring the slaves, and on the Polish side, the, the cattle was the the aim. So, which were sold uh, the couple with the great profit in the Krom, in, in Kraków, for example. Bilhorod Strevsky from the other side was very quickly became uh, very quickly became one of the three leading slave trade centers in the region. Despite the official official peace with the Turks, the Tatars raided Lithuania and the Krom uh, almost all year. And the Polish Lithuanian side responded with military measures, including the creation of the Obrona Potoczna permanent defense. Uh, this idea um, was uh, created during the reign of the Olbracht at the beginning of the 16th uh, uh, century. Uh, so, um, uh, in the uh, in the fifth, uh, as I said, in the 1530, uh, if the 1538. Uh, this territory was um, occupied. The Moldovia and uh, and the and this and Olbia and uh, vicinity uh, and Ochakiv by the Tatars, uh, then by Tur Turks, uh, uh, and in this way, situation stabilized for the next several dozen years. And the next uh, great war with Turks place uh, uh, took place only in the 1595. Uh, in the Battle of Moldavia, when the Poland uh, gained back the uh, Moldavia after the Battle for Kutsora. And uh, in the 17th century, both there are series of wars in these areas uh, with both Turks and Tatars. And the last time when the Commonwealth troops went to Ochakiv was 6047. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, we have such situation, um, and uh, you see the territory, uh, and uh, now we are coming to the uh, to the uh, uh, last part of the historical background. So it was uh, in the 16th century the period of uh, relative stabilization. Although neither the Turkish nor the Polish side wanted a bitter uh, to embitter the dispute, all, almost every year was a smaller Tatar incursions, and in the response, Polish Lithuanian uh, side developed this uh, 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 this defense tactic, orig originated as I say at the uh, beginning of the 16th century. The essence of these tactics was to organize a network. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, 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 to organize a network of uh, border checkpoints, uh, uh, the task of which was constantly to constantly carry out the reconnaissance of the intelligence activities uh, in the Tatar territories and to create a system uh, of efficient uh, 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 communication between them to make a preemptive attacks on the Tatar abodes uh, as soon as possible which was to weaken to the preparation of the invasion and either uh, scarring people away from the invasion. Uh, so uh, this we have the uh, situation in which both the Turks and the Polish Lithuanian side controlled in each other attacks to a more and more limited extent. 
and neither one nor the other ruler did not want to cause a full-scale conflict because for Turks it was as 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 I show you at the map uh, not the first not the most important uh, axis of the expansion to the Europe for Poland also not so important and large profits from the spoils gained uh, by both both sides encouraged to take the risks of failing out of the favor with the ruler uh, more and more people willing uh, to get rich quickly uh, this is also probably where the uh, where we uh, the begins the the history of the uh, uh, of the of the uh, of the cossacks uh, history so you have the uh, uh, view for the olbia from olbia a few years ago at the step and one of such border starosts uh, uh, was Bernard Predvich, active in the years 1535, 1559, uh, the, uh, the starost of Bar, and was very famous uh, for several successful re retaliatory invasions on Tatars. And um, apart from the few dangerous nicknames here, and also the proverb. So the uh, 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 the border is free from Tatars uh, because of uh, Predvich. So uh, for our considerations, he is a key figure because uh, his incursions finally caused the authentic or mock anger of King Sigismund II uh, Augustus, the king in 1548. Uh, 1572 and for this reason he had to defend himself before the same so the polish parliament in the 1550 by writing his multi-page apology in which we can find many historical details related to the incursions an important part of the predfish memorial are the references to the topography and the, of the disputed area when he mentions that he was attacking tatar hordes uh, the fort near Kremienczuk, this is Boch, then Chapchak Kaleya, then to Barimboy, Ajibek, Berezan uh, plateaus, and finally the Ochakov uh, itself. Uh, so it should be added uh, here that in the in the context of previous uh, consideration that Predvich uh, was a Polonized uh, Silesian, conducted abundant foreign correspondence, and young nobles uh, from the old side Poland came under uh, his sign in the hope for fame and uh, loots. It can therefore be assumed that uh, he was an educated man for his time, and uh, he was no stranger with the writings of ancient authors. Uh, and in Polish literature, it appears uh, the uh, very very uh, early in the beginning of the 16th century. Uh, junior, the, the first mention uh, about the uh, Boristenes or Boristenidas is the Jan Dantyszek, who just uh, describes he as a youth man, a young man, uh, his uh, um, participation in the military operation of the uh, of the Jan Olbracht uh, uh, expedition. And of course, it will be not Dakoi uh, and Getai uh, or Boris Tenidas or Olbiapolitas, uh, but uh, he means Wallachians, Turks, and Tatars. Uh, uh, so we have uh, also the in the Polish literature Marcin Braniewski, who described this uh, um, vicinity of Olbia. Uh, and uh, this is very interesting that it very uh, similar uh, year uh, it was published also Brata uh, Civitas only just put I would like put your attention to uh, the other uh, publication of the um, uh, the means are uh, sorry means was very uh, critically uh, 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 mention uh, this Bernievsky, uh, this Bernievsky description of Olbia. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the Olbia for Bernievsky, for Bernievsky was Ochaki. Uh, but Ulrich Schober, Schober in Torun, uh, just published in the same, almost the same year, uh, the book Olbiopolis, so Civitas Beata. Uh, in which the uh, only in purely rhetorical way 
not geographical, he mentions Olbiopolis as a uh, happy, happy city. Uh, so it, it was not connected to the uh, to the real Olbia, but very uh, but shows that uh, the Olbia uh, was uh, in this time still uh, present in the minds and in the mental map of the of the elite uh, of the Polish uh, of the Polish state and Polish Lithuanian state. Uli Schober was uh, active in the Toruń, which was part of the crown uh, of the Polish crown. Uh, Franciszek Gradowski is another example uh, who is, but this is maybe interesting because Boristenis uh, or Boristenita in this moment, they are uh, identified not with Tatarians, but with Russians. Uh, this is the, or Moscovians. Uh, this is the description of the uh, wars between uh, Litua, Lithuania and Poland uh, against the Moscovia. Uh, on the uh, vicinity of uh, of Orsha of Smolensk, so this is the upper part of the uh, Dniepr or Boristanes River. So they, uh, uh, Maciej Kazimierz Sarbiewski, this is 17th century, very important persons, and you can find the uh, Griffin Gentilium Dutsis, I use them, Krug Spatsis Omen, this is the, the Griffa Boristanis, so uh, this is a piece praising Jan Karol Chodkiewicz, Hetman, uh, Jan Karol Chodkiewicz, the general commander, um, uh, and this allusion to this coat of arms, but also allusion to the uh, Herodotus uh, place, uh, probably uh, about the and the mentions about the uh, uh, about the uh, 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 and this, the end, at the, uh, the end of this uh, tradition, so the north uh, territories, north from the point of view of the ancient, uh, bar, uh, uh, ancient Greeks and Romans, uh, is coming in the beginning, in the first half of the 19th century, when uh, in the uh, Alexander Count of Fredio, Fredro, uh, one of the literary persons there, is going I am Papkin, Lion of the North. Uh, later, we have to do uh, with the East or Eastern Europe, not the North. So this is the uh, changing, the closing point, point of this of this tradition, of this literary tradition. Uh, returning to our document describing the proposed route of the border within Turkey and considering its authors, uh, such as Starosta of Kamieniec Podolski, Jerzy Jaswodziecki, from Buczacz, whose ancestors, as I just show you, Ilya once owned properties near Ochakiv. Also, so in this case, uh, we can presume very good knowledge of the topography uh, of this vicinity, of this territory, and of course, very good knowledge of the uh, uh, ancient literary or cultural tradition, so the knowledge of Olbia. And the following border is present, uh, is, is proposed. This is, this is the, the part of the document. Uh, so you can see this fragment, which is very uh, interesting. So it is uh, uh, so uh, signed for the, for, the, for the red one. And uh, you have there uh, the, the Polish version transcription and the English translation by me. This is the, this uh, document. Uh, uh, in uh, which I just uh, saw and photographed in the in the archive uh, um, uh, in Warsaw. And to my knowledge, this is the oldest modern description of the area. Uh, maybe I find will be uh, will uh, uh, find something uh, something uh, earlier, uh, uh, something um, uh, before this this sixteenth century. In short, the border, according the pro to the proposal of the Polish side, was to run from the lower reaches of Dniester across the Kualnik River flowing into the sea uh, in Odessa, through the Kualnik Liman to the Mop to the Bok River into the Dnieper. And the document uh, is a double disappointment because both the Turks uh, broke off the negotiations and there is no mention uh, about the ruins of former Olbia in it. Although it was written by educated people who probably knew the area from autopsy. 
So at that time, Wolbia was uh, still identified with Jochakiv, and probably even the ruins that could be found at the mouth of the Bog did not evoke any association with the city. But uh, we have a spoon of honey in this uh, in this in this barrel. Uh, 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 let's say the Boplan, uh, the Boplan plan, uh, the Boplan map uh, again, and this is the uh, presuming line of the border: uh, Ottoman part, Jagiellonian part, and uh, even. Uh, uh, this this map of Kippert, uh, also from Olbia to the Tiras about. So this is the uh, proposed borderline uh, in the 19th century. But there is a, also, as I said, a spoonful of, of honey in this barrel, uh, in the star barrel. The document mentions Rutenian crossing, uh, a crossing near Olbia. This would confirm the, the assumption of the several hundred years ago and uh, even more, so several thousand, uh, when the water level was much lower, there was a crossing near Olbia, perhaps, perhaps even four. There you see the Tatarian roots in the 16th century and the trade routes uh, between the, 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 the uh, Dansk and, and Odessa, let's say this way. Uh, but most important are the Tatarian routes for invasion to, to, uh, to Podolia, to the Kron, and to the Lithuania. And uh, 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 now you have also the uh, more big, big, bigger picture. So there is uh, this Tatarian routes uh, was uh, very similar to the earlier routes of the invasions of Scythians, uh, Huns, uh, Kimerians. Uh, from east to the west, uh, so uh, we may uh, we may just uh, uh, presume that these routes, in geographically, uh, were not so man, not, not so changed with the time. Uh, in this, uh, in this, this is my presumption. Uh, uh, maybe uh, interesting. So, uh, and there is a very interesting Baltic theory, Baltic hypothesis from the. Uh, 2000 uh, publication repeated uh, in last publication uh, by other authors in 2015. Uh, he just uh, uh, proposed uh, in the late Bronze Age the uh, uh, roads. He identified the roads uh, between the Dnieper and Boch uh, in this territory. So this is a shortcut because the Dnieper is going so. Uh, um, make a bow here. And uh, in his uh, uh, opinion, it would be uh, the Olbian roots with the fort near the Olbia in the city and pre Greek uh, times. This hip hypothesis was rejected because there was no sign of the, uh, of the uh, uh, fort of, the, of this uh, uh, crossing uh, at the, at the, at the Boch. Uh, after the sonar um, examination of the of the river, uh, because it's too deep here, but uh, it, it is deep maybe because uh, of the uh, after the building of the uh, of the Nikolaev uh, of the Nikolaev uh, uh, by Russians and uh, uh, making the shipyards there the, with the submarines uh, military submarines in Nikolaev built so it is. It was destroyed. The the the, the earlier probably the earlier uh, place, the earlier the route uh, by the uh, uh, through the through the Boch, and uh, the Ruskaya Kosa and Voloskaya Kosa, Wallachian uh, and Russian, uh, or Ruthenian or Ruthenian uh, 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 sandbar. So I I propose uh, uh, after Baltric to place to uh, this uh, fort or crossing uh, Ruski Pierevos, uh, which means crossing actually in this place. And then we have the Olbia. In this, in this place, we have Olbia itself. And uh, actually, the sea level was uh, between six and eight meters uh, uh, lower than today. 
uh, in this time, then you see the uh, Shipik, uh, the very interesting uh, publication. Uh, uh, and uh, I know that uh, there was uh, also the sea level uh, research made for the Danube. So I will be very, um, very thankful for the uh, for the in discussion for the uh, support in this time. So I, I have only the literature for the Olbia and Dnieper. Uh, area for uh, in vicinity. So, in conclusion, and sorry that it took so long, uh, 40, 45 minutes. Uh, so we have. Uh, when I may say that the uh, um, this document is credible for me, first because uh, the uh, uh, the knowledge of the in the 16th and 17th century, the knowledge of the Olbia itself was very good uh, because of the uh, education uh, ancient based on the latin uh, language uh, among the polish elite and uh, latin and Ukrainian elites and secondly because uh, for the 100 years and even until the uh, half of the 17th century the, this area so the pontic area between olbia and tiras was in the interest of Polish military uh, 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 of Polish military. So uh, and then be, before the Tatars, before the beginning of the 16th century, for the 100 years, there was there were also the um, even the the towns or small cities or, or, or villages uh, founded by the Polish uh, nobles. So the presence uh, was for 100 years uh, and uh, the military intelligence was this territory was in Polish and Lithuanian military intelligence until the uh, second half of the 17th century so they should they have to know very good uh, the topography of this area and I think that the, the uh, lack of mention of the Olbia the, the, of the ruins of Olbia was the, uh, the first plan caused by the ancient uh, misunderstanding even in by Herodotus uh, uh, about the, the original place of Olbia and uh, by the uh, by these inscriptions in uh, found uh, with Olbia uh, in text uh, uh, found in Ochaki for example and secondly uh, by the uh, that uh, by the existence of this uh, uh, of this fort of, of this crossing uh, with the name Rutenian Pierevos, uh, so nobody thought that uh, uh, in this case, even if they just uh, watched the um, uh, the ruins, uh, the ruins were probably not ancient, uh, not looking very ancient there, uh, because uh, after our expedition, after our uh, excavations, it appears that. Uh, the Olbia existed even to the uh, first half of the fifth century, to the Hunic period, uh, but as a um, uh, as a Gothic or, or, or village or, or city, maybe so, and was rebuilt, rebuilt, restored on the more uh, Gothic way, uh, not uh, not the and remains of the city was probably. Uh, hide it, hide it, uh, under earth. Uh, so this is uh, this is, uh, and I ver I am very happy at the end that uh, just I found the uh, this document in which we have uh, uh, very uh, very uh, significant. Uh, uh, we find the information about the crossing. Uh, it changes. It changes. I think that the, it changes our look, our interpretation of the Olbia history at all. Uh, but I, this is only the beginning of the way. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thibault.